see you, everybody. Just want to take the time to thank Pastor Dobbs for inviting us to come, present our ministry, and then preach the Word of God. We've been to Brazil now for, this is on, isn't it? Okay, I did turn it on before I got up. Uh, we've been in Brazil now for 26 years. Hard to believe, huh? How time passes. Been in Brazil for 26 years. We've been able to help out four ministries there, helping other missionaries. And also, we established a church in 26, uh, well, we started a church in the year 2000, but turned our church over in 2016 to a national pastor. Uh, I did uh, turn it over earlier to a pastor, and then uh, the pastor messed it up, and well, the, the church asked us to take it back over, and uh, we had to teach, the Lord led me to teach Bible doctrine more in the, about the local church and how to deal with problems in the church. Our church had to deal with problems, and they were new when it was turned over the first time to a national pastor. And when we came back in furlough, had to take over the work again, the ministry again. But praise the Lord, in 2016, in 2016, our work, Fundamental Baptist Church in the city of Alvarado, was turned over to Pastor Enoki. And so when our work was turned over, I said to Brother Enoki, I says, well, now you're pastor of this church, we're going to go to Huberberta, which is a uh, suburb of Porto Alegre. Porto Alegre is a city of 4 million people, and our suburb of uh, uh, Berta is 90,000 people there in, in that area. And so I said, we're going to turn this over to you, and I'm going to start a church over there in Huberberta. And he says, Pastor, he says, I would like you to start that church through this church, and we want to help you. Well, you know, the Lord many times will give us the desires of our heart. Amen? I have been praying that the Lord, that I could be able to establish churches through that church. And, uh, and also, Pastor Naki said, when you go back on furlough, I'd be glad to lead that ministry. We can work together in soul winning. So like Paul and Silas, we're working together. We have our services on Thursday. He has it on Wednesday. And we have a Sunday afternoon, Sunday school at the same time in the morning. And uh, we have ours at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and, and uh, 7.30 in the evening in Avarada. And so we turned that work ministry over to Pastor Naki. In 2016 of July, we started Fundamental Baptist Church in Hubenberta. Started that church with 12 people. We thank the Lord for what He has done in the lives of those people. That ministry there is different than our church in Avarada. Our church in Alvarado, we could have turned that work over after four years if we had a man. I, it's hard. In Brazil, there's not too many seminaries there in Brazil that are training men for the ministry. And those seminaries that they have, all the missionaries are turning there, uh, asking that we would like a, a, a pastor. And so there's very few. There's very few. But uh, so we uh, I thank the Lord uh, for my family. Uh, my family, uh, Althea, she's a big help in the ministry there and our working with the ladies in our church. And our church, like I mentioned, is different than the church in Alvarado. How is that? Our church in Huberberta has a lot of baggage. Huh? A lot of baggage. People, you know, had miserable lives that the, that the Lord saved and transformed their lives. But it takes time. When you got that baggage, it takes time to uh, grow in the Lord. Amen takes time to throw away that old baggage and live a new life, huh? like we heard in Sunday school this morning. Huh? And um, uh, it's hard. It's not easy. And my wife, she works with the ladies, ladies tea, and works uh, with them, counseling them. I thank the Lord for our children are involved in the church. Stephen, he preaches once in a while. He's doing online Bible college. He's he, uh, studying to be a pastor, missionary. And so he's uh, opening the service, preaching uh, from now and then. Lissa, she has a talent. Uh, she has a talent, as you notice, uh, in the area of music. But she also has a talent in working with children, teaching children. When she was 12 years old, she started teaching children. And I thank the Lord for her. Uh, oh, she keeps those children in line. Uh, it's just amazing. I mean, you're talking about children from homes where they don't have a father figure, just the lady uh, raising the child, and so they're very disobedient. But my daughter keeps those children in line. They obey, and I thank the Lord for her, for the ministry, uh, for them being a part of our ministry there. 
just to let you know in relation to our children, the first time we came back on our, last time we came back on furlough, uh, Stephen, we said to him, you can stay here, live with one of your aunts and uncles, and uh, go to Bible college here. He says, no, Dad. He says, I would like to go back to Brazil. He's a Brazilian. He was uh, born in Brazil. And so he went back to Brazil, and he started online Bible college one year already. And but also, we gave this opportunity again to them. I know a lot of missionaries will say, well, you got to, when you go back to the States, I'm early, you got to start Bible college. You got to, I want them to pray and ask the Lord what they, the Lord would have them to do. Amen? And nowadays, with the technology that we have, we can have Bible college online. Amen? And so both of our children desire to go back with us. Uh, Liz and Stephen are both certified English teachers. So they can teach English, uh, make money uh, that way, provide for themselves, and also uh, so uh, in also bringing out about uh, with Pastor Naki and I, we have been training the young people. Uh, we're having our uh, uh, youth group together, uh, Verada and Hubenberta together, training the young people, showing them how to win lost souls to Christ, and also uh, uh, training them. We started a uh, popcorn preaching about six years ago, five, six years ago, having the young people preach. And what a blessing it is. And today, on Wednesday, as many times, we have a young teenager preach the Word of God. And uh, the, right now, as we're back on furlough, they're helping out Pastor Naki. Sometimes he, has a, he had a teen service just recently on a Sunday evening. Had the teens do the ministry, the, the service, uh, leading the music. And we have about... Uh, Six to nine young people going out every Saturday, soul winning. And what a blessing it is to see my son and to see Marcos, 14-year-old boy, now 17, uh, preaching and leading people to the Lord. About every week they're seeing somebody receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. And just a week ago in Hubenberta, Pastor Naki shared with me, uh, that three of them went out that day, and they went to a home, and a man invited them in. He says, I'm going through some problems in my life. Can you come in, and I would like to talk. And of course, they went in, and Pastor Naki and the other two men that were with him, they were able to lead that man and his wife to the Lord Jesus Christ. And just less last night, just encourage you, do not give up in giving out gospel tracts. You know, we're going to see the biggest results we're going to see is in heaven. Amen? The biggest results we're going to see is in heaven. And uh, this last night we heard word, uh, my wife received a call on WhatsApp. And uh, on the gospel track they stole and some of the old ones have our phone number. So there was a lady that called, started to speak to her in Portuguese. She says, I received the gospel track today. It was yesterday, yesterday morning. She says, I would like to come to your church. My wife says, well, we're no longer, uh, we're missionaries. Uh, but she gave, uh, sent the information to Pastor Naki's wife, and they picked her up today for Sunday school. Amen. And her name is Vanya. So pray for her. I don't know if she's saved, but we need to go out. Amen? Need to go out. So don't give up giving out gospel tracts. Praise the Lord. That's a result of evangelism yesterday. There's a new person in church this morning. A new person in church this morning at the church in Hovenberta. I thank the Lord, as I mentioned, for what he has done. Uh, because when we went there um, in 1997, when we went to Brazil, there was more uh, missionaries there in a heel grunge to soup than there is today. And because of this lack of missionaries there, what's wrong? Many missionaries have quit. During COVID, my wife would say to me, another missionary quit, left the field. There's so many that are giving up. We know two churches in our state that are without, fun, uh, without a pastor and our, our state of Hill Grunge to Sioux. One of those churches was started by a missionary that my father-in-law supported. Uh, they're an hour away from us, but they have 
uh, fundamental Baptist churches in the area closer that are helping that church out. Otherwise, I would help out. But uh, because of the, the need for workers, we help each other out. And I tell you, I just thank the Lord for our young people. We have about, uh, we have a young couple. Uh, his name is Lucas and his wife, Mariata. He is studying online to be a preacher. Wants to, and so he's helping out preaching. We have Stephen. We have Marcos. We have Jogo. I'm trying to think of any others. No, I believe that just those right there. That are also Bento, which is young. That's uh, leading music, opening the service. And... Uh, Davi. So uh, just to make mention, many of you know Alana. Alana is the uh, wife of Jacob Yoder. And Alana was uh, saved through our ministry. Uh, Lord just transformed her life and many of her, uh, her whole family is involved in the ministry of our church. Her brother Jogel is involved in leading, opening the services, leading music and preaching once in a while. Her brother Bento is involved and open in the service. Her youngest brother is involved and in, uh, the computer, working the computer like the sound system. Huh? So all of them in that family are serving the Lord. But what, uh, when we, uh, Jacob came down to visit us and we had a wonderful time him visiting us and then uh, he fell in love. And uh, she is fruit of the ministry. And uh, with all churches sending us, Jacob wouldn't be married to Lana today. Huh? That's true. Without churches sending us, we wouldn't see these young people serving the Lord. We wouldn't have the church in Huben Berta. We wouldn't have the church in Avarada. We wouldn't have the church in uh, Caixuarinha. Caixuarinha is uh, another church that uh, we support. Uh, we have faith, promise, missions, giving. Our church in Brazil supports eight mission, ten missionaries on Alvarado they support. And our church in Huvenberta supports eight missionaries. And one of the missionaries that we support, his name is Aldo Fredo. Now, Aldo Fredo was from Venezuela. He was uh, discipled, went through the seminary uh, Bible school that one of our missionaries that we support, Brazilian men, that we support in Venezuela, trained him, and God called him to heal Grunge to soup. And so that missionary, he said, called me up and said, Brother, I want you to show Aldo Fredo different places where there is a need for missionary. He raised up support. Our church supports him too, also as a missionary. And uh, he started a church 20 minutes from us in the city of Caixorinha. And what a blessing. Is, uh, they run at about 25, 30 people if everybody's attending there. Uh, when he went back on furlough, not furlough, to visit uh, his family in Venezuela from December to March uh, this year, he asked me if I would lead his work for about, uh, prayed and asked the Lord to, uh, uh, he asked me to pray and consider leading his work as he goes back to visit his family. So I prayed about it. Being they have services on Sunday morning, we just have Sunday school. He doesn't have services in the afternoon, our main service in Hubenberta is in the afternoon. And uh, being he has services on Wednesday and ours is on Thursday, I prayed about it and I said, Brother, the Lord already laid on my heart. And uh, uh, I tell you, what a blessing. Leading that work for a few months, uh, three or four months, seeing the Lord bless, seeing those people that are living for God. Also, another ministry. <laughs> uh, we have another missionary that went on furlough, and he asked us to lead a uh, Bible study on Tuesday nights. On Tuesday nights, they have a Bible study that started in a, the way it started. Nathan Ring uh, was getting his car fixed, and he was able to win the mechanic to the Lord. And this mechanic, on, uh, mechanic asked him, Gabriel asked him if he would be willing to have a Bible study and speak to the other workers. They started to see many of the workers get saved. He started a Bible study on Tuesday nights. And many of the workers and their wives got saved. They have about 8 to 15 that are meeting every Tuesday night. So when he came back in furlough, he asked me if I would be willing to lead that Bible study. So here this last year, we're like leading two and a half ministries. And uh, when we get back to Brazil, uh, 
to get back to Brazil in uh, November. We're heading back November 14th and 15th. In December, uh, Pastor Aldo Credo wants me to lead the ministry again in Caixarinha. But uh, there is a need. There is a need for more workers. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. We need to pray. And I tell you, I thank the Lord for the help for these young people in our church that are serving the Lord in our church that we can train for the ministry and prepare them for the ministry. Amen. Just continue to pray for our ministry there and uh, Huben Berta Alvarado. I tell you, it's a blessing working together with Pastor Naki and uh, uh, working together like Paul and Silas. Uh, having a ministry like that with a missionary, I recommend missionaries are going out to the field. You know, if you have an emergency, and you have, who's going to take over? Unless you have somebody trained in the church. Right. And it's good to have missionaries that can start a work 15 minutes or 20 minutes away from one work that they can work together and have services at different hours. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That we could be able to help each other out. And uh, turn your Bibles with me now to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Start of my introduction here. I know it is the desire of your pastor, of this church, to see more people receive Jesus Christ as their Savior and be discipled. Amen? That's my desire in Brazil. I want to see more people saved. We want to see our neighbors saved. We want to see more people saved and added to the church. However, to see this church grow in numbers as well as spiritually, we, what do we need? What do we need to see this church grow? To see more people saved and disciple? What do we need? More Christians ready to serve our Lord. We need more Christians ready to serve our Lord and be helped to their pastor. Amen? We need more laborers. Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 9, 37 to 38, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Amen? Pastors and missionaries are human like anybody else, and we, we need help. Amen? We need, we need help. We can't do the Lord's work alone. I thank the Lord for Pastor uh, Dwayne Spears that came to help us when we were alone. The Lord, I just said, Lord, I need another man to work with me. And uh, I had a deacon in my church helping me going out soul winning, but it was just my deacon and I. And I just said, Lord, I would like to have another missionary. And the Lord called uh, Dwayne Spears. He's now in Gervatari. But uh, uh, the Lord answered my prayer. Amen. But we need help. Your pastor needs help. We need workers. Amen. We need workers. Uh, the churches need Sunday school teachers. Amen? Praise the Lord for the Sunday school teachers they have to teach children. We need workers for the nursery to take care of the babies and the young children. We need people to clean the church. Amen? I thank the Lord for those that in Navarada and our church in Huben Berth that are cleaning the church. They're doing this as a service unto the Lord. We need uh, people in the area of music that take care of the music in the church and special music. Also, the church needs laborers to help out in soul winning, evangelism. The part of outreach, evangelism outreach, is very important. Amen? Imagine if no one shared the gospel with you. Are you thankful? Are you thankful that the Lord led somebody to share the gospel with you? Amen? But imagine if no one shared the gospel with you. Be lost and head into hell. I thank the Lord for Miss June Andrews, a missionary that shared the gospel with me, and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that winneth souls is what? Wise. Amen? It is the responsibility of every Christian to be a witness and to tell others about him. Amen? The responsibility in Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and unto Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Our Lord Jesus wants to use us once we're saved to tell others about him. Once we're saved, 
Uh, Miss June Andrews, uh, the person that led me to the Lord, uh, she, she said, the Lord wants to use you now. She wrote down the Romans Road, and two weeks after I was saved, I was able to lead my first soul to the Lord. And I've been serving the Lord in my local church since I was 16 years old when I got saved. Helping out and going out and telling others about Him and teaching. Our Lord doesn't need us. He wants to use us for His glory and honor. I'll repeat that. The Lord doesn't need us. He wants to use us. I'll explain that. Let me explain that. Sometimes we think, uh, sometimes I think, what if I never went, if we never went to Brazil? What if we never went to Brazil as missionaries to Alvarado and started that church? Would that church exist today? Would the church exist in Humberto? Would Pastor Alfredo be in the Caixarinha? Would it exist? Sometimes we think, but you know, what does the Bible say? It's God's will that what? That none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Of course, uh, it's God's will that none should perish. He wants to see everyone saved. Amen? He could have sent somebody else, but he wanted to use somebody, just like Isaiah. He shared, the Lord shared with Isaiah about the need for workers. And what did Isaiah said? Lord, here am I, send me. And we were willing to be used. We saw the need in Alvarado. We saw the lead, need in Brazil, in Rio Grande do Sul. And we said, Lord, here, here am I, send me. And we were willing to go. The Lord is looking for people that he can use for his glory and honor. Are you willing to be used? Are you willing to be used? Now, I'm done with my introduction here. Uh, turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be uh, done through strife and van or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your precious word that you have given to us. And I ask, Lord, that Thou will empower me, Thy Holy Spirit, that Thou will speak through me, Lord. Help us apply the principles of Thy Word to our lives. And Lord, we just ask that there's someone here that doesn't know You as Lord and Savior, that today they receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Ask Your blessing upon this service, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Many people in the world... Oh, before I start out, I just want to say that, just to share with you, um, uh, because being in Brazil for 26 years, many times dreaming in Portuguese, thinking in Portuguese. And when I come back and I'm preaching behind the pulpit, sometimes some words come out in Portuguese. I'm well, as I'm preaching, I'm trying to speak slowly and read slowly because many times I'm thinking words in, in the, uh, Portuguese. We love Brazil. We love the people. But I just wanted to give you a warning of that. So if I say a word and I don't know, you don't know what I'm saying, you, you know that I'm thinking in Portuguese, huh? And speaking Portuguese a little bit, huh? But I'll try to stick to the English. Amen? 
Uh, now, many people in the world today live their lives to impress or please others. We know that. We see that in the world today. Many people put a lot of emphasis on these things, pleasing others and themselves. But we, as children of God, ought to live our lives to please who? Our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you living your life to please your Lord Jesus Christ? We ought to live our lives to please Him. And 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 2 uh, says, the Bible says, I know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self. Covetousness, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. This is a sign of the end times. And we can see this today. People are lovers of their own self, only thinking of their own selves. And it's sad. It's, there's corruption in the world today. Oh, there's corruption in Brazil. We have right now, I, I didn't mention this, but we have right now in Brazil, the president, the presidential election this last year, uh, Bolsonaro lost, and uh, the president now is Lua. Well, really, Bolsonaro won, but because of fraud and that, the, the other man won. And this man that's president is a communist leader. He is a convict. He was in prison for, year, for quite a few years for corruption. For corruption. And he's president. You think Brazil would want an honest man leading the country? But we see this in our world today. There is corruption in our world today. There are people that are only thinking about themselves. They're thinking about money. Money has become a god in the, in the lives of many people. Even Christians, sad to say. There are so many Christians today that are so consumed about, oh, i got to have more money. i got to have more money so I can have that new house. i got to have more money so I can have that brand new uh, Camaro. Or that charger. I like these new chargers that are coming out. Say to my wife, boy, that sharp looking car. Reminds me of the old charger, huh? Dodge Charger. Sharp looking. But so many people are consumed. They're consumed. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. You know, we need to think about others. Amen. So many people are thinking about themselves instead of thinking about others. Paul in this passage that we read. And Philippians is encouraging the church in Philippi to walk together. And this morning we're going to look at three exhortations in 10 minutes here, three exhortations that Paul gave to the church in Philippi. And found three, oh, I just said a word in Portuguese, huh? <laughs> the first exhortation is Paul encouraged the church to serve the Lord with unity and love. Look at verse 1 and 2. If there there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that we be what? That ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. To have unity in the church, Christians need to show love and kindness to others. Amen? Amen. Are we showing love and kindness to others in this community? Or are we so consumed that we're just thinking about ourselves? You want others to see Christ in your life? The way to do it is show love and kindness. Be concerned about the lives of others. Think about others. I, wanna, I tell our people, I've been preaching a lot in this area about compassion. Having the love of Jesus Christ. And telling our people, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us to be like Him. Amen? Have compassion for the lost souls around us. This July, my wife and I will be married for 28 years. Hard to believe that my wife's put up for me, with me for 28 years. Amen? But uh, we'll be married for 28 years. Both of us had different talents and ideas. However, working together, we share our ideas and use our talents for serving the Lord, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? What could cause us not to work together? 
you know what can cause us not to work together or cause problems or strife in a church? Pride. Pride can cause us to have problems with others and not to work together. The Bible talks a lot about pride. God hates pride. One of the main roots of many sins is pride. Many divorces are caused because of pride. You know, there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong at all to say, I am wrong. Will you please forgive me? We need to look at our lives, examine our lives. Are you thinking just about yourself? Are you being selfish? Are you concerned about the needs of your wife? We need to be sensitive to the needs of others around us. Are we sensitive to the needs of our wife, husband of the wife, and the wife of the husband, and of our family, the needs of our children? We need to be sensitive to the needs of our children. There's nothing wrong when we do wrong to say, will you please forgive me? There's nothing wrong. We need to do that more. We don't see that today. We need to be careful not to let pride take control of our lives. At the end of Philippians 1, uh, 2, 1 says, If any fellowship the Spirit, if any bowels in mercy, this means that we need to show mercy and compassion to others and be sensitive to the needs of others around us. Ephesians 4, 32, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. No one is perfect. Amen? No one's perfect. Only our Lord Jesus Christ. We all do wrong once in a while. We all do wrong once in a while. We need to realize that. A second exhortation. So we saw the first exhortation. The second exhortation to the church that Paul gave is to serve the Lord with humility. And verse 3 and 4, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem what other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Strife and selfishness can uh, hinder a church from growing. I've seen it. I've seen it in, my, uh, in Brazil. Strife and selfishness can hinder a church from growing. We need to show compassion and love to others around us. Before God, we are sinners saved by grace, by the grace of God. Amen? We should cast out of our lives the selfishness and treat others with respect and courtesy, considering the interests of others above our own interests. Are you doing that? Paul is encouraging the church in Philippi to be careful of selfishness, jealousy, and show interest in other people. You know, yesterday, Pastor Naki, they went out, and it went out soul winning, and this man had some problems. When they went to the door and they were talking to him, trying to present the gospel, he had some problems. But you know what they did? He, when he said, would you come in? I'd like to talk to you. And they said, sure, we'll be glad. Pastor Naki, Leandro, the ones that went out, they were concerned about that man, concerned about his soul. And they took time to hear about the problems that he is going through, and they point him to the one that can help them. Help them, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He can help us with any problems. They point him to the Lord Jesus Christ and encourage him to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior and him and his wife receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Working, serving the Lord with unity and humility is one of the ways to help this church grow in numbers as well as spiritually. We need to be showing. Third exhortation to the church we need to be more like Jesus. We need to be more like Jesus. Look at five, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 8. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, 
who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Our Lord Jesus is our best example to follow. Amen? You know, we as pastors, all of us as Christians, need to be representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ. And ambassador, um, what's the word in English? <laughs> Ambassadors. Ambassadors, I remember. It was the only thing of the word in Portuguese. It's to show how much custom we become to Brazilian culture, but we're all ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to tell others about him. We're representing him. Amen? And he wants to use us, and we should be imitators. We should be imitators of Jesus Christ. We need to be more like Jesus, showing love and helping others like he did during his time here on earth. As I mentioned, Althea and I will be married this year for 28 years. But we have, and we've been together for all these years. But you know, sometimes we, we're different in some ways. If you know Althea and you know me, uh, we're different. But in a way, we're the same. I can remember the times when I'm thinking about something and I say to my wife, I says, I've been thinking about something. And then I share with her, and she says, I've been thinking about that same thing. And she find that? Why is that? Because we're serving the Lord together. Amen? We've been together. We're one flesh. Amen? When we were married. We, uh, the more time we spend with our Lord Jesus, reading his word and praying, the more I walk like him. You want to be like Jesus? You want to be more like him? Spend time with him daily. Read his word daily. Pray with him daily. Seek him daily. Amen? That's how we'll be more like Jesus. Every Christian should try to be more like Jesus and live like he lived on this earth. Amen? Jesus, of course, is perfect and has never sinned. However, he was tempted like, like us in sin, not. And with the Lord's help, he could give us the strength to resist temptation. Amen? It's sad. And I'm sure your pastor, as well as uh, Dr. Dobbs, many of us that are in the ministry, we hear so much of pastors that are no longer in the ministry today. There's a need for more workers today. As a missionary and pastor, I like to see more people come to the Lord and be faithful serving Him and be a good disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you a good disciple and representative of our Lord Jesus Christ? Can others see the Lord Jesus in your life? Can they see the Lord Jesus in your life? that stays faithful, serving the Lord. He is worthy of our service. Amen? That stays faithful. One, serve the Lord with unity and love. As a church, we need to work together. We need to work together. We need people to go out soul and need people to tell others, invite others to come to church. We need to work together to see this church grow. We need unity. We need to serve the Lord with humility. We need to think of the interests of others and not just ourselves. And third, we need to be more like Jesus. Imitators of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be more like Him. I encourage you, this exhortation that Paul gave to the church in Philippi, all of us need to apply it to our life, lives. Every one of us should try to be more like Jesus. In our church this last year, I had a, taught a series on the life of Christ. Why? Because I want our people to be more like Jesus. We need to be more like Jesus. You want to see more people saved in this community? 
You know, the Lord's return for the church is soon. Dr. Dobbs said, could be soon this week. Amen? I'm longing to see the face of my Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to stay faithful as a church, as missionaries, as pastors, as children of God, giving out the gospel to others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this precious word you have given to us. Help us, Lord, to work together. I know it's hard sometimes, people working together, but we need to work together, serve the Lord together to reach others with the gospel. Help us, Lord, to swallow our pride and to think of the, the interests of others instead of ourselves, to humble ourselves, and help us, Lord, to be more like you. Oh, how, Lord, we need to be more like you. Help us, Lord, to show love up to other people the way you have show, shown love to us and others. Help us, Lord, to be a light that others can see you in our lives, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen.